Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, in my last live stream, I showed how to install GitLab in Docker, and I had a few people during the live stream, and even a few people after the live stream tell me that uh, Git, uh, G-I-T-E-A, uh, is uh, a great alternative to that, uh, that I guess takes up fewer system resources, that sort of thing. Uh, I know GitLab is kind of a resource hog. So uh, in this video, what I wanna show is how to install uh, Git, uh, I, I hope that's how it's pronounced anyway, uh, and Docker, and uh, just kind of go through that process for a local install. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at how to do this. Okay, so here we are on their official website at gitty.io. Um, and basically it's saying here, it's a community managed lightweight code hosting solution written in Go, and it's published under the MIT license. So, um, I mean, if you're not familiar with this, it's it's a Git platform like GitHub, but self-hosted, or again, like GitLab, like we talked about uh, last Sunday during the live stream. Uh, basically this is uh, their website, and all of this, of course, will be linked in the description down below below. So um, there are uh, a few different ways you can go about installing this and setting this up. But if we head over to their installation docs, uh, there's a whole section about doing this with Docker. And I highly recommend that you take a look at this page because uh, there is some information in here you may want to take a look at. Uh, first off, we've just got a basic install. Uh, this doesn't have any kind of a database or anything like that on it. And that's, uh, that's not super helpful in my opinion. So uh, if we scroll down a little further, uh, there are some different options as far as uh, ports. Uh, if we go a little further, uh, here we go. Here's the version with the MySQL database. And uh, basically you can kind of see in here how they've um, how they've added the little plus where they've added things. And that's cute and whatnot, other than I had to go back through and manually reformat the whole stack because otherwise Portainer wouldn't use it. So um, I've gone ahead and done that. However, there is, um, there's a the there's another option here uh, for Postgres. Um, there's named volumes if you want to do that. I've already done that uh, in my setup. But but basically this is uh, the, the 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 basic install. Now keep in mind that there may be other environmental variables uh, that you'll want to take a look at and possibly add uh, when you're going through this setup process in your uh, in your Docker Compose or your stack. Uh, and I will have links to all of that in the description down below as well. Uh, but if we scroll over to the next tab, uh, here is the stack that I created uh, for the sake of this video. Again, linked in the description down below uh, so you can copy this and, and kind of follow along here. Um, and of course, that's just a duplication of the other tab. So here we can see that I've already got this stack in here uh, in my uh, portainer setup. Uh, and if we open this up, uh, basically, uh, you can see that all of this is going to be basically the same as uh, that, nope, this one right here, other than I've cleaned it up and kind of reformatted it to uh, to work in Portainer. So if we just kind of jump in here real quick, we can see it's version three. Uh, as long as you're on version uh, 2.11 uh, or higher, uh, you should be fine. Uh, <clears throat> versions lower than that won't support uh, a stack this high. Uh, in that case, you should be able to uh, change that to version two. You may have to modify some things in the stack down below. Uh, but a version two should be fine. Uh, but again, if you're current, version three will work without issue. Uh, you will notice here that I'm on version 2.5.0 because uh, for some reason it got released uh, temporarily, apparently. I think it was preemptively released um, and I just managed to grab a hold of a copy of it before it went away. Um, so let's not pay atten any attention to that for the time being. <clears throat> But uh, basically, so we've got version three, uh, we're going to create a get T uh, external network or, or rather external will be false in that case. Below that, we've got our services. The first one is the, the get server. Uh, we've got the image that we're gonna pull there. That is the official version. I, I believe you may be able to even change this uh, to latest if you wanted to do that. Uh, this is the specific version that was uh, referenced in this, uh, this stack or this Docker Compose. Uh, so that's just what I went with here. Uh, the container name, uh, because because we're setting this up in a in a Docker or sorry in Portainer, you don't need this this container name line. But if it's there, it's not going to hurt anything. Below that, we've got some environmental variables. The first is the user ID and then the group ID. If you're not sure how to get those, uh, I am on uh, in this case Open Media Vault, um, and uh, so basically, in order to get that, uh, what I would do. In fact, I'm just going to pull this up real quick. Uh, I'll just log into my server like so, and login as root. 
because I can, but basically when I log into uh, Open Media Vault um, and, and Portainer and all of that, I just leave the, the username as admin. Uh, so what you can do to get your ID would be just be type an ID and then whatever username you use to log into Open Media Vault in this particular case. Uh, so I would, oops, uh, it's off a whole, whole set there. Like so, and here we can see UID 998, GID 100. So UID, GID, uh, that's where those came in. Below that, we've got all of the database configuration stuff. Uh, for MySQL, uh, the database host, username, password, uh, database name, things like that. <clears throat> below that, uh, restart always, good option to have most of the time. Uh, below that, again, we're gonna use the Getty network. Um, and then we've got volumes. Uh, the first one right here uh, is for the configuration for the data that'll be stored in Git here. Uh, below that, we've got a couple of uh, time zone uh, volumes, one for local time and one for time zone. Uh, that's just to help keep everything synchronized. Uh, below that, we've got a couple of ports. Uh, port uh, 3000 will be your your dashboard, what you're gonna log into for uh, the, the the desktop experience on the website. And then port 2234 in this case uh, was originally 22, but I changed it because uh, port 22 is already being used on my system uh, for, well, for, for, for SSH into the system. So I changed it to 2234. And then below that, it depends on the database, which we're gonna take a look at next. Uh, here we're going, oops. Here we're gonna look at uh, using MySQL version 5.7. Again, we're always gonna restart that. We've got our, our MySQL uh, variables here for password, user, password, database, um, and then networks, and then volumes. Again, we're mapping all of those. Uh, one thing I will say is don't leave <clears throat> your username and password uh, as uh, Git, just just don't. It's a bad practice. Like it's it's one thing if you're only going to have it accessible on your home network, uh, but but definitely if you're going to have this accessible from uh, from a remote location, uh, change all of these uh, to something uh, other than this so that you don't have just the default stuff in there uh, for security reasons. So. <clears throat> Once we've got our stack in here, <clears throat> uh, we're basically good to go. What I did want to show you real quick though, is if I jump over to my images uh, and take a look at this, uh, this particular image uh, right here is only 158.8 megabytes. And then uh, your MySQL is another 447. So you're about 700 megs in for your download. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind when you're doing this. If you're on a capped uh, system where you're wondering how long it's gonna take to download, uh, you should be able to extrapolate the numbers based on your connection speed, things like that. So what I'm gonna do is close that tab and then I'm just gonna scroll down and uh, yours will say, uh, deploy the stack. I'm just gonna update the stack. I already had this set up and running. Actually, one more thing that I want to do, uh, now that I think about it, is I want to cd into SRV uh, slash uh, confs, and I uh, take a look in there. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any addition or any existing folders from previous testing, that sort of thing. I don't, so at this point, we're basically good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just click the big blue button, and we'll hang out and give this a couple of minutes uh, to do its thing. It won't take me very long here uh, because I've already downloaded the images, but uh, we'll give this a second and there it is. Uh, so next we can just jump back over to here and open port 3000. And here we go. Uh, here, here's all of our configuration stuff uh, where it's automatically pre-filled all of our database configuration stuff. So you should be able to leave this alone as it is. Uh, below that, you can change the site title. Uh, you can change your repository root path. Uh, you can change all of these different paths. Um, if you change this git, uh, run as username git, uh, you, you may run into issues. So if you want to change that, make sure that you set up a user and give it the pr proper permissions for this to work. <clears throat> uh, the SSH uh, server domain, I'm actually going to change uh, just here real quick, like so. Um, <clears throat> oops. Like so, our server SSH port is 2234. Our listen port is 3000. And then again, uh, same thing here, I'm going to change that. Oops, uh, to uh, the base URL of our server in this case. Uh, so basically at that point, all of the basic stuff is good to go. Uh, there are some additional settings here if you want to set up email servers, uh, that sort of thing, you can put that information in. Uh, Third-party uh, service settings, uh, you can enable all of this stuff as necessary for your setup. And then <clears throat> administrator account settings, uh, go ahead and create this. Uh, I'm gonna call this DB Tech. Like so, oops, dot com, like so. And then I should be able to just click get EA, or sorry, get T. 
Um, that one still gets me. <clears throat> um, but basically, we'll just go ahead and give this uh, a chance to uh, run its installation. And if we come back over here, uh, we can see that <clears throat> definitely something is happening as far as networking is concerned. Uh, if we jump over to here, uh, again, same thing. Uh, it's just kind of doing some stuff in the background, not too much, but we'll give this a minute. And then hopefully we'll be brought to uh, a login screen next. All right, so <laughs> it somehow managed to log me in. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at site administration. Uh, basically, uh, here you go. Here's all of the stuff uh, that you would need as an administrator to uh, delete all unactivated accounts or delete repository archives or whatever it is you need to do in here to administer uh, your setup. <clears throat> uh, basically, here at this point, you can get some system stats uh, as far as how long it's been up, uh, memory usage, memory allocation, uh, all kinds of stuff in here as well that you can look through. Uh, there are user accounts in here that you can take a look at, uh, organizations, repositories, webhooks, authentication sources. And so you can you can read this. I, I, I trust you. Uh, so basically at this point, um, I would not use this account to uh, to actually uh, do your, your code hosting. Uh, I think that's just a bad practice to use your admin as your user. So I would definitely set up an additional account for the sake of uh, setting up your code hosting uh, as a different account entirely. So the, the next step that I would normally show at this point is actually how to use the software, but uh, explaining Git in a video uh, is kind of outside the scope of this particular video. Uh, it may be something that we address uh, separately at another time. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of really good Git videos out there though. Um, and even the software, when you create your first repository, will go through the process of telling you uh, what you need to type into each or type into your terminal to get things set up. So I don't wanna go into any of the actual using Git, that's a whole separate topic in and of itself. But what I wanted to focus on in this video was just setting up Gitty uh, so that you can have your own code hosting repository uh, for storing your code, for sharing your code, keeping track and versioning your code, things like that. That's what I wanted to show was just setting up this server. And we've done that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, it would really mean a lot to me if you give the video a thumbs up, really would help me out with the channel quite a bit. Uh, also, again, all of this will be linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you wanna be like, like some of the other cool people who have supported the channel, whether it's through PayPal, Coffee, Patreon, whatever, uh, you, you can definitely do that. Uh, also, via the link in the description as well. Uh, I wanna give a big shout out to my current supporters. You guys rock. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it is very much appreciated. But with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.